Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and in today's video we're going to be diving deep into the much hyped mid-ranger Nothing Phone 2A. We'll be checking out all the specs and features and see what the phone is capable of. Here in the UK, the phone costs £319 for the 8GB and 128GB base version or £349 for the 12GB and 256GB version. So we'll check out what's in the box. Peel this tab off on the top here and we've got the nice embossed engraved box. Flip the lid, we've got this little bit of text on the side, welcome to nothing. Nice to see that, little welcome. We've got the phone sitting on top here. We've got the USB-C to USB-C charging cable with transparent features, safety and warranty information booklet, nice transparent SIM tray ejecting pin. And then the phone 2A itself, of course we'll be jumping in to see what the design and build is like, but we get no charging brick. So nothing is known for its transparent design language which brings the phone's components into the external design. We have talk of symmetrical imbalance, 90 degrees infinity back cover and the light show. So we have a 6.7 inch flexible AMOLED display up front. To the right we have the power slash lock button around the bottom. We have the SIM card tray microphone, USB-C port and speaker. And then we have the SIM tray here which is a dual nano SIM setup. Pop my SIM in there. To the left we have the volume buttons which are quite a bit lower to what I'm used to and then to the top we have another microphone and then we have the earpiece and 32 megapixel front camera and then we get to the party which is around the back and we have what has become synonymous for nothing and the transparent design language. We have the three zone LED lights slash glyph interface around the dual 50 megapixel camera setup and then we have the flashlight on the top right here. And this was the make version so it has a slight haziness to it and a glossy plastic finish which has good grippability and the frame on this phone is also plastic not surprising for a mid-range phone and then we'll check out how strong the build is and absolutely fine seems solidly built no sounds or anything and then the vibrations and haptics on the phone feel strong precise tight thanks to the linear haptic motor and here's some additional information on what the phone 2A includes. Some of these features we'll be checking out in the rest of this review. So the phone 2A has a 6.7 inch flexible AMOLED display with a 30 to 120 hertz refresh rate, 1300 nits peak brightness, 394 PPI, 2160 hertz PWM frequency and it's covered in Corning Gorilla Glass 5 so that's going to have good scratch and drop resistance. So we can see it dims quite low and then your typical brightness is around 7 to 800 nits. We jump in the settings, we have your usual stuff here. Adjust your brightness. You can change the colors, but I couldn't see the difference between the two here, so I don't know what's going on there. Looked the same to me on both settings. I think we have another S24 situation here. And then obviously you can pick your refresh rate from dynamic, high or standard. And then on lock screen, we have additional things. You can pick your lock screen shortcuts. And I like this little animation which kind of flows into the block button and then back out again. And then we have additional settings further down. So tap to show lock screen, things like that. And then you can schedule when to show the lock screen. But nice to have a lock screen with this clean interface. Looks really good in a dark environment. The viewing angles are generally very good as expected from an AMOLED panel with maybe a tiny bit of cooler temperature shift but hardly noticeable. 4K support on YouTube. And we also have 4K HDR 60 FPS on YouTube playback. The phone has no problem playing HDR 60 FPS footage. We're supported and the colors are vibrant and bright. And then for Netflix, we have wide one level one support, but no support for HDR playback, but you're still getting an enjoyable viewing experience. And you'll still be getting sharp, vibrant visuals watching anything on this display. Stick around and we'll delve into a more comprehensive evaluation of this display's performance across various criteria such as gaming and the user interface in general. 
outdoors or in more bright environments, the display is perfectly legible, although in direct sunlight or light, it will suffer from reflectivity as expected. So the phone 2A has stereo speakers with a bottom firing speaker and the earpiece as the second speaker and there's no specific tuning as far as I could see but the speakers are good and sound good so we'll have a listen. any OS updates on this phone, only two years of security patches, which is quite disappointing. So if you get the phone, you're gonna be stuck on Android 14. So yeah. The Dimensity 7200 Pro is under the hood of the phone 2A, paired with 8 or 12 gigabytes of RAM and is running on Android 14 with nothing's custom UI on top. And you can expect three years of OS updates and four years of security patches. And then looking at the settings and what we get, so you can obviously adjust your glyph interface and you've got loads of different options here where you can use the glyphs and lights for different things. So you've got flip to glyph, glyph timer. Uh, we have volume indicator, that will show your volume adjusting with the lights and things like that. So really handy features if you choose and you can customize them to your heart's content. And then further down, just a usual, I guess, settings and, you know, accessibility stuff that you're going to find and what you would expect from Android 14. So on Antutu Benchmark, we got 604,583, which is respectable. And there was a jump in the battery temperature for Geekbench, 1019 on single, 2118 on multi. And on the wildlife stress test, we can see the phone was hovering for performance range around 20 to 30 frames per second, which is reasonable. And then generally using the interface, control panel, easy to use, straightforward, and you've got your notifications at the bottom, floating windows, so useful if you want to have multiple windows open. And then split screen works absolutely fine. I've got YouTube and Chrome running here. And we also have this AI wallpaper build up, so you can kind of mix and match different wallpapers and it'll create. And then you have loads of custom widgets that you can pick that nothing have created just for the phone 2A and the user interface. So there's loads of different ones here, so like the usual drag and drop, but really clean interface. And then we'll just clear out all the open apps and just run through opening different apps on the phone. And you can see nice and snappy, open, reasonably fast, no problem there. So you're just going to be, you're going to be absolutely fine running your daily apps and stuff. So we'll check out how the phone handles exporting footage. I've got 1080p video around three minutes long loaded into CapCut. So we'll see how that feels. Set that to 1080p. And that took roughly two minutes and 34 seconds, so slightly on the longer side, but we'll check out how that performance translates when it comes to gaming. So we'll check out gaming, and the phone has an advanced cooling system consisting of a graphite layer for faster, more even heat distribution. So we'll be checking out how that performs and we get into some heavy gaming. So we're starting off with 76% battery, and we'll jump straight into asphalt here. And this is on the higher graphic settings and the game's running absolutely fine looks beautiful on here nice 60 fps next we'll check out pubg mobile and we can see hdr is the highest anything higher than that is blocked out and then we have ultra for the fps so we'll jump straight into that 10 minutes in and the game is hovering around 40 fps being the max
So I'm going to drop that down to lower graphic settings to see if that bumps up the FPS and we're still hovering around 40. But perfectly playable, nice experience on here. And then temperature wide, the battery is at 35 degrees and the CPU is at 37 degrees. So warming up slightly. And then we've dropped down to 72% in that time. So next we'll check out Jaeger and push the graphics. So I'm going to set them to ultimate. And I noticed the game was a bit uh, wrong aspect ratio here. So I quickly restarted. And again, seems to be running fine, but if you're looking for the high FPS with higher graphics, you won't get that. So it's managing a range from around about 20 to 30 FPS on here. And this is 27, 26 minutes into the game. And if you drop the graphic settings, then you might get a bump in FPS. So it's going around 32 now. And the temperatures have jumped. So the battery is at 39 degrees and the CPU is at 47 degrees. But the phone itself feels slightly warm, so the heat chamber is doing a good job. It wasn't like getting really hot or anything. Next we have Genshin Impact, so I'm going to clock everything to the highest. 60 FPS on here as well. And please mind my game playing skills, I'm not the best at this game. And we can see temperature is still quite high. So I'm going to just drop the graphics and for gaming, you'll get an enjoyable experience with reasonable graphics settings. The higher FPS rates are possible, but with a game that's less demanding graphics wise. But overall, here and performance wise, the phone performs well. So on the optic side of things, we have two 50 megapixel cameras on the back with the main having OIS and EIS and ultra wide with a 114 degrees field of view. And the front camera comes in at 32 megapixels. But in the camera app itself, you've got your usual slow-mo, video, photo, portrait, and then more, which has like time-lapse and panel, things like that. Video is highest at 4K, 30 FPS. And then you have your normal settings here. If you jump into the camera settings, you've got your generic stuff where you can change things. And we also have night mode if you want to turn that on and off. You can turn HDR on and off from a quick setting there and then you can do different additional settings. You can pick from the 50 megapixel camera or 12 megapixel. And then portrait. You can also adjust the f-stop here so more blurry backgrounds or less. So we'll check out some video footage that I've recorded with the phone and some photos that I've captured. And again, this is just me, you know, playing around with the phone, just snapping different things. So it's not a true representation that will come from an experienced photographer. Just walking down the street, checking the video footage, recording at 4K 30 frames per second. And checking the mic quality as well. And we'll have a look at the battery life and the phone comes with a 5000 milliamp hour battery that supports 45 watt charging and then you can get zero 
to 100% charge at 59 minutes or 0 to 50% charge at 23 minutes. Battery settings on here is the usual stuff you'll find. But for me, battery was really good. We saw a test of that. We're playing games only dropping, you know, around 10% across more than half an hour gaming, intense gaming. And I was using the phone for my benchmarking testing as I usually do for a few days. And I managed to get mixed use, so heavy light use. And I was really impressed with that. So in conclusion, I think nothing have done a really good job with this mid-range phone for the price at 350 pounds for the higher spec model you're getting a really good phone the chip and performance is okay for a mid-range phone like i showed with the gaming you're going to be having limited graphics on certain things you're not going to be hitting the highest fps rates so if you're solely looking for a gaming phone you'll have to look elsewhere but cameras on here really nice enjoyed those general performance is fine anyways thanks for watching guys and i'll catch you in the next one take care